I really enjoy Eagle Rare. I really like that McKenna bonded single barrel 10 year. It's got to have that color to it, you know? Like, I'm talking like a charred barrel. Oh, do you want to talk about four oak? Like, I want to talk about char. This Charmander. Shit. Are we going to bust one out right now? Goodbye, my love! Hey guys, I'm Dan. And I'm Eddie. And we're the Deathless Dogs. So we've never left the <laughs> Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen. We're still here. And now we've got ourselves. It's the Old Forester, 1910. Uh, part of the Whiskey Row series that they've done of uh, four different releases. This was the third one, but they're all to like commemorate different times in like the Old Forester legacy, I guess. And I've had a little bit of it. Eddie hasn't had it yet. I think it's pretty good. It's got kind of interesting story. Apparently, uh, back in sometime in 1910, I'm assuming they had dumped a bunch of barrels to be bottled, and then there was a fire. It shut down the bottling line. So they couldn't bottle the whiskey they had in this vat to be bottled. And they needed to get it out of the vat for some reason. I don't know. They said it would, the whiskey would go bad if they didn't get it out. So they put it into a second round of new charred oak barrels to get it out of the vat. And they say, I guess, that that was essentially the first ever double oaked bourbon, as they claim. I mean, there's a lot of claims that people make in whiskey and none of us were alive to tell them any different. Double oaking is kind of like what Woodford Reserve is known for. There's a lot of people doing it now too. The way they do this one, I guess, is it's their 100 proof bourbon and then they take it and put it into a second barrel that is supercharred. Like to the point it's almost just gonna crumble apart. Beyond a level five char. So they just char the shit out of another barrel. Them barrels are in shambles. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's rough. They then put it into that supercharred barrel for another like six to nine months and then what you come out with is this i bought it in red wing when we were at big turn music festival what's the price point on it i paid for it there 57.99 which i guess is about uh average i think this is in like the 50 to 60 dollar range usually in most places you find it if you want to do the honors and give it a spin i've heard the 1920 is the the one to get. Well, let's not downplay the 1910. No, not at all. I, I do enjoy it. But most people that have had all of them have said the 1910 and 1920 are the go-tos. Most people prefer the 20. This is a very dark colored yeah. bourbon that we have. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. And initially, my first kind of smell that I took in like a burned oak barrel, but also Fruit. it has a bit of a sweetness to it. It's very sweet. Kind of cola. Like I, it reson resonates with like a Coca-Cola. Or like, I'd even say like cherry Coke. It's got that dark cherry. I could see that. Super sweet. Well, let's uh, clank them and try it here. I do. Yeah, I like that. You can really taste the char. Yeah, I was going to say, initially, like, burned wood yeah. up front. Yeah. Like, and as it goes to the back of your tongue, you get, like, an up front burned wood with a little bit of sweetness, and as it rolls to the back of your tongue, there's almost, like, a smoke flavor to it. Like, smoked something. I don't know. And there's almost, like, it's it's not a dry whiskey. It's like, there's something about it that like almost gives me like a powdered sugar taste to it with a little bit of smoke. What's the name of those things with the powdered sugar and the Chex Mix and the fucking... Puppy Chow? Yes. It's like pup, smoked puppy chow. You That's should, what I'm going you with. You should probably make that on the Traeger. Smoked pup. It would taste like this. <laughs> if you Traeger up some... Puppy chow. I don't know how I don't know how that works out. 
it works out like what this tastes like. You can see a little bit like on the back, like the sides of your tongue, but doesn't totally dry you out like some. Now that I said that, though, I taste nothing but puppy chow with a little bit of smoke. Yeah, it's good though. I mean, if you like puppy chow, mm. this is the whiskey that you're after. Yeah, yeah. If you enjoy the puppy chow, which who doesn't? I mean, yeah, who doesn't like? Shame on you if you don't like puppy chow. I remember the first time my Aunt Jane made puppy chow, it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> like, as a kid, you come in and you just see this bowl of, like, cereal that's yes. covered in candy, and you're like, mm, how? I think she made it with uh, Crispix. They, I think that's what you're supposed to do. But I think like, they got a little more structural integrity, and they can handle the chocolate better. But I didn't wow. realize there was chocolate in there, but yes, yeah. then this would definitely have, like, some dark chocolate notes. See, I, I always associated puppy chow with just the outer crust of yeah, you know, it's the actually, powdered there's, sugar. There's a chocolatey element. Which makes it so much more awesome. But yes, smoked puppy chow in a bottle. This is great. Yeah. I would buy it. Definitely. Price point of fifty seven ninety nine in Red Wing, Minnesota. Right, at a small like family run liquor store. So I mean if you go to your bigger stores it might be a little cheaper. Than that, um, at that point, just grab them. That was actually a really cool liquor store, though. I would say. Oh, I'd for being some just cool booze out of. I mean, we love Re- we love Red Wing in general. We love Barrel House. What's up, Kevin? But yeah, that liquor store had a lot of good stuff. West End, I believe. West End Liquor. In West Red End Wing. Liquor. That's where I picked this up. Conveniently located adjacent to one of the best pizzerias we've ever been to. Red no, Wing Brewery Pizza. No doubt. That stuff doesn't mess around. Go there if you're in Red Wing for real. Love it, that place. It's magazine pizza. <laughs> then go to West End Liquor afterwards. Right. And buy yourself a bottle of anything. They have a good, like, it is kind of a honey hole. Right. Let's be really honest is. here. It, it's, I, it seems like the owners are fans of the good shit. They had a, they had a couple of the other Forester. They didn't have the 1920. I think they had the 1897. But I went with the 1910 because I had heard good things. And yeah, was not in any way disappointed. As far as our ratings, would you buy it again? I'd definitely buy this again. Like I've said before, I'm in that like $30 to $40 range. Usually this is a little bit higher than that, but worth it if I find it. And the 1920, if I find it, I'll definitely pick one up because that gets way more praise than this even. This is defined as old fine whiskey. It's old and it is fine. So if you've been following us for a while, you know we've been in here. Um, the Emporium. Where is here? Uh, it's the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium <laughs> for ladies and gentlemen. But it also doubles as a recording studio, practice space. We've been in here for a long time recording our new EP, and we are done recording it and it's being sent off to minneapolis to get mixed right now which means we should have some new stuff for you coming very soon it's been a long process but like the end product i think is very worth it if you like the stuff we were already doing i think you're really gonna like this kind of like we really like this so i found this based on a recommendation i was looking for old forester found it in that store and picked it up if you guys have any recommendations of things we should be drinking let us know And we'll do our best to find them, seek them out, pick them up, and uh, tell you what we think. We will review the hell out of them. I think that's about a wrap for this one. All right. And always, cheers from the Western Wisconsin Whiskey Emporium for ladies and gentlemen. Really rolls off the tongue. Did you see that shot? Yeah, he missed. Breakout.